Today we're getting back to the grind, literally. The, I've removed the braces at the bottom in preparation for getting the floor cut out and the floors replaced. The floors have, have already been uh, cleaned, phosphated, primed and painted actually. Uh, a lot of people think that that was a bad move for me to paint it beforehand. It's always something I want to try. Uh, because I don't actually think there'll be that much uh, paint damage when I put it on and it's certainly a lot easier than doing it when it's on the car uh, far better job so what I've done here is I've spent today uh, you can see with the carnage cleaning up a lot of the mess with wire brushes, with heat, with scrapers with uh, brushes on the grinder and so on. I'll skip showing that step because it's dealer's choice what you want to do is that regard yourself. Uh, there's fellas like Rob Mackin uh, who, who's actually used a very very nice industrial paint stripper to do it. It's one of these things that's very very dangerous. Rob's a professional so uh, however you want to get your underseal off but in this case we don't actually need to get all of the underseal off and now that I've had a good chance to look at the floor, I have decided what I'll do is I'm going to take off the original sill edge, which is here, to expose the floor lip. But I'm going to leave the, the surprisingly, the, the middle sills on these is actually not that bad. I mean, even the insides of the actual sills themselves are not that bad. Uh, the bottoms are rotted to heck. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that as a uh, date on point, I'm going to take off the return lap and then I'm going to take out the strip along here to disconnect the floor. The floors are folded in here and as you can see below a lot of this looks solid as soon as you take the the wire brush to it on the grinder that's what we get loads and loads of pinholes so the metal is, is rotten and that's pretty much all the way on the floor. I did actually get questions when I put the original video up of me cleaning this off while I was replacing the whole floor. Well, there you go, that's why. Uh, a lot of the areas here, extremely pitted. And as you can see, I've actually took the grinder to this and I'm still not able to get clean metal from it. All I'm getting is polished up, tarnished, so come along to the corners here. I mean even this section may seem solid but when you look at the level of putting and the weakness shown uh, the car's going to thank me for uh, replacing the floor front to back. Now to get the floor out other than the attachment at the sill we need to unpick this lip which is actually a return from the two plates that make up the back cross member. We need to detach the spot welds from the box section underneath the seat and from the captive nuts. Now, depending on how bad yours is, you may be able to see the spot welds. We were very, very lucky. But what I intend to do is I'll be cutting this down here on its own, then taking this out and using that as a template to cut into the, the new floor. There's nothing really attachment wise in this area. When you get to here, you have the seat brace, which has a row of spot welds along the back. I've still got a couple to take out, but it also has some uh, sneaky ones in here. Often, actually, they're not attached. Uh, I mean, these ones here that I drilled out, I didn't need to go through the second scan. It didn't, it didn't actually make contact with it, so... Uh, I know there's going to be more up here, but it's under so much rot, it's not defined. So I might need to drill those from the other side. This is the middle of the seat brace. So you've got to remove, and the same here, and the row at the front. Now when I'm going to replace the floor, uh, the express panels floors include the bit into the tunnel underneath here. However, as I would like somewhere to work from, 
I'm actually going to cut this particular floor along here, just off the rub. This lets me leave the captive nuts in place, use the front hole as a datum and the back edge. The back edge on these floors, as you'll see, I've already joggled in so that it sits underneath this edge. So I'll take the mark it up and time to start cutting. Well, that's us nearly at the hard work stage. It's lovely to see the accuracy <laughs> of the jigs that they used at the factory uh, with so many, so many of the spot welds almost missed. As Tim Morgan says, measured in furlongs were the tolerances. But all in all, I'm actually quite, quite happy with the, the state of the box section here. So, cardboard template time, so that we don't make the same mistakes. And under the seat brace, all seems well, with the exception of this, which is perforated all the way through. So, it looks as though we would be as well just cutting down here and adding another section in because the section of the floor is not so great but other than that I've just got the floor edge to come off and we can start measuring and setting the panel in the cuts where I intended to put I've actually cut them with a bit of margin so we'll get back to that uh, and get them both trimmed to size when we put the floor section actually in but as I said off to the the hard work now, cardboard template time, clean, brush, acid etch, phosphate and of course get some coating onto this stuff because it's a rare opportunity to get to areas that we don't normally get to. So that should conclude part one. Round two time, actually time to put the floor in and first order of the day clean up the carnage from cutting it out in the first place. Uh, the floors from ESP actually come uh, pretty much ready to go as we can see but yeah I can't, can't work in that so uh, we'll get that cleaned up and then it's time to survey the area uh, for damage, for example, the box section for the that holds the heater, heater tube is going here, and that's going to be much easier to fix before the floor goes in. And same for the section that's pined here, and same for this section yeah, that's pined here, which is a little rotten as we've seen in part one. So once we get those fixed, it'll be time to measure up the floor and see about getting the final cuts done and getting it in. One step closer, that's one repair piece in. I've got the second one more or less shaped, folded and clamped, ready to repair in here. And once that's done, one more, more step closer to getting the floor in. Well that's us just about ready to put in the repair section. However, the old adage measured many times, cut once comes to mind because I forgot about the flares at the edges. So I'm going to have to add an extra piece in at the end, rather than just fold it. Uh, quite angry with myself, but you know, you're going to make mistakes. I won't get it bang on first time. Uh, no point getting bent out of shape about it. So let's get this piece in and move on. <laughs> 